the Biden administration reportedly believes the Chinese hacking operation, which breached senior State Department officials' email accounts, gave Beijing insight about what the U.S. was thinking heading into Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's trip to China last month. The espionage campaign was discovered by Microsoft on June 16th, just a few days before Blinken's visit. The State Department says uh, Blinken raised the hacking issue with China's top diplomat during a meeting in Indo Indonesia yesterday. Joining me right now is Fox News contributor, Tao Professor of International Relations and Polit Politics at Pepperdine University, and Hoover Institute Re Research Fellow, uh, Kyron Skinner. Kyron, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. So I want to just get this straight. We find out that the CCP spied on the State Department and the Commerce Department. We find out on the 16th of the month that they got all this information about the U.S.'s plans and thinking ahead of Anthony Blinken's trip. And we still send Anthony Blinken, and then we follow up and we send Janet Yellen as well. Yes, and many more. John Kerry and others and the Commerce, just looking at it um, objectively. But actually, what the U.S. was thinking heading into Secretary of State Anthony Blinken's trip to China last month. The espionage campaign was discovered by Microsoft on June 16th, just a few days before Blinken's visit. The State Department says uh, Blinken raised the hacking issue with China's top diplomat during a meeting in Indo Indonesia yesterday. Joining me right now is Fox News contributor, Tao Professor of International Relations and Polit Politics at Pepperdine University, and Hoover Institute Re Research Fellow. Uh, Kyron Skinner. Kyron, great to have you. Thanks very much for being here this morning. So I want to just get this straight. We find out that the CCP spied on the State Department and the Commerce Department. We find out on the 16th of the month that they got all this information about the U.S.'s plans and thinking ahead of Anthony Blinken's trip. And we still send Anthony Blinken, and then we follow up and we send Janet Yellen as well. Yes, and many more. John Kerry and others and the Commerce Secretary either have met with high-level officials or will very soon. Um, you know, it seems perplexing the way that you present it and the, just looking at it um, objectively. But actually, Maria, I think there's a logic here. And it's not about the Democrats or the Republicans. I think it's a point of view that's been deeply embedded in American politics, especially since World War II, when the U.S. was the greatest power on Earth. There is a sense among many, and it's a bipartisan issue, um, that the world wants to be like us, that if we just lecture people, that they will become like us. And when we get information that is contrary um, to that very reality, like the hacking problem with the Chinese, I think there's a cognitive dissonance, and that's what's going on with the Biden administration. It's receiving hard evidence from the Chinese, from the South China Sea, from its human rights abuses, um, across the board. It's demanding that um, the, um, our military policies and our sanctions change before there can be military-to-military -military relations, of which there are none now. And we keep making more concessions. We don't receive the information that we are actually getting every single day from Beijing. We don't believe it, actually. We lecture them. And that's what Blinken, our Secretary of State, is doing. Um, on the sideline meeting that he, ha he had um, in, um, in Jakarta, um, at the ASEAN media, um, um, summit, he said, um, we want a rule-based international order to continue in the 21st century. Well, of course we do. We all want yeah. that. But the Chinese have a different point of view, and they aren't changing. So we're yeah, lecturing Karen, them. I'm talking, we're I'm telling talking them. About something. Yeah, I, I, I got to tell you. I, I mean, it doesn't feel like the U.S. is lecturing anybody. It feels like the Chinese are lecturing the U.S., and it feels like we are on our heels. What I'm, the point I'm making is that 
we continue to get rolled over, whether it is the CCP putting police stations throughout America, whether the CCP uh, putting all of this surveillance in play on America from the spy balloon uh, to TikTok and, and, and everything else, uh, not to mention the COVID cover up, not to mention fentanyl being sent into America. And what do we do? We keep going back to Beijing begging for meetings. So I don't see Blinken lecturing anybody. I see the CCP lecturing the United States, however, and I see the, the, the CCP getting an upper hand on the, on the United States. Do you disagree with that? No, I think you put it quite right. I think there's a combination of um, we're telling them this is what you need to do, but at the same time not being strong enough to stick to our words. And you're right. All of these meetings that are happening right now are ones that we're basically begging for at all costs under the premise that we have to keep communications going, um, no matter how low level. And it's been striking to me. And I've been studying and being a part of U.S. diplomacy for 30 years. I've never seen this, where spokespersons representing the Biden administration um, state before one of these um, meetings takes place, um, there won't be deliverables. We're not expecting that. We just want some communication to happen. Um, that doesn't lead you anywhere if you preemptively make concessions by even declaring nothing will come out of the meeting. And you're right, right to mention fentanyl, Maria. I mean, we can't even get a working group on illicit drugs between the U.S. and the Chinese. That was part of what was supposed to happen with this kind of shuttle diplomacy of Blinken and Biden in the last few days. Yeah. What's coming out of all of this? I right. think we're well, weaker that, well, each time. The, yeah. That's right. And we continue to look weaker. And, you know, China, and just the way that the CCP presents things, China yesterday said that it's open to a visit from U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo, whose email account was also targeted in the espionage campaign. The Wall Street Journal editorial out with an op-ed writing this, uh, Ms. Raimondo would send a better message if she uh, passes on Beijing's invitation and explains that if China wants U.S. cooperation on business, trade and investment, it will stop its cyber uh, marauding. Uh, meanwhile, I mean, and, and this is the point I'm making. I mean, we keep asking for meetings and going begging for, for communication, and they keep uh, with their aggression on the United States. I mean, the spy balloon, there was no response. Uh, the cover-up for COVID, no response. No response to the police stations. It's absolutely outrageous. And then as we're on our way to meetings, they're spying on the accounts to know what the U.S. is thinking and what the plan is for those meetings. Special Climate Envoy John Kerry is also traveling to Beijing on Sunday. Uh, he claims he's having climate talks, as if the CCP is going to do anything about the climate. Here's what he had to say about this uh, during the Foreign Affairs Committee hearing. Watch this. This happened yesterday. What we're trying to achieve now is really to establish some stability, if we can, in the relationship, without conceding anything. There's no concession. I'm not going over with any concessions. What we're trying to do is find ways we can cooperate to actually address the crisis. Because China, as the world's second largest economy and as the world's largest emitter, is critical to our being able to solve this problem. Uh, it would be malpractice of the worst order, diplomatic and political and common sense. I mean, Karen, knowing the CCP's background and the evidence we have of the intellectual property theft that has gone on for a decade, uh, 600 to 800 billion dollars it's costing American companies. You know, I mean, why is there no acknowledgement whatsoever of any of this? We, uh, do you really think that the CCP is going to do anything about the climate? They are the producer of products of the world. You go to China, which I've been to, I mean, the air stinks. You can't even breathe it in. It's so bad because they're producing products for the world and you've got fumes all over from the production facilities. You think they're going to stop doing that so that they can clean the climate? No, and that's why... Um President Donald Trump pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord. I mean, the way that you address um, nations that are being incredibly tough, um, like the Chinese, with their um, attempt to rule the international system, is actually pull out of discussions with them, pull out of negotiations, pull out of treaties, um, and then regroup and come back um, with 
your point of view and your defense of really America first. That's not what we're doing. We're seeing a very different look at how um, the U.S. government is, is conducting itself around the world. You're talking about China. I agree, Maria, with what you're saying. You put it so clearly. But also, if you look at the NATO summit and the European trip that the president just had, he's doing the exact same thing. I was really struck by the fact that Zelensky was basically running circles around the U.S. president, lecturing us on when, in fact, he should be, his nation, part of NATO. The U.S. response should not be, when this war is over, you can join NATO. It should be, what about your democratic processes? What about reducing political corruption in your country? I don't think that Ukraine should dictate to the U.S. its admission to the most, the world's most durable security alliance. It should be the reverse, but it wasn't. Yeah. So it's across well, the globe. It's not just China. It's everywhere where we have a real stake. We're just backing down to whoever yeah. the actor is who speaks the loudest. Well, well, let's be clear. We're backing down to the Chinese over and over again. That That's for sure. President Biden said yesterday that Russia's war on Ukraine must end before Kyiv can join NATO. Uh, here's what he said. Watch this. No one can join NATO while a war, a war is going on, where a NATO nation is being attacked, because that guarantees that we're in a war, and we're in a third world war. So that it's not about whether or not they should or shouldn't join. It's about when they can join, and they will join NATO. The uh, issue of whether or not uh, um, this is going to keep Putin from continuing to fight, the answer is Putin's already lost the war. Uh, President Biden also authorized military leaders to deploy 3,000 reserve troops to Europe in response to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Karen, your thoughts on where we are on this Russia war on Ukraine? The war is in, at a stalemate, and that's really important to note. And that's why we're sending reservists. That's why we have delivered and will deliver even more cluster bombs that um, 120 nations around the world refuse to use. This war is not over at all. And, you know, I'm just mystified by what the president said in the clip you just um, played, because he's basically saying this country can join NATO, this war is about to be over. but. The American public has to make some decisions here. Don't we have something to say, the taxpayers, the voters, about, you know, creeping ever closer to being part of the Ukraine war? Don't we have some discussion among, uh, with our legislators about admitting a country like Ukraine to the, to the um, Atlantic Alliance? You know, the president's ignoring the fact that when you poll Americans, there's a lot of concern about being in this war, the way that we're in it, and many Americans don't think we should be in it at all. I'm not saying mm -hmm. that that's the point of view that should govern, but he's speaking so authoritatively from just a point of view that he likes or a perspective that he wants to dominate. Um, yeah. I just don't think, ultimately, it represents America. And I think elections, you know, we say they have consequences. They do. Um, we have, we will have a very interesting 2024 um, as this um, a Biden administration foreign policy continues to gather steam. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the McCad TV family. Please like and share McCad TV. We love you all. Please support McCad TV Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.